In this tutorial, we're going to use data from the World Happiness Report to demonstrate how you can use ChatGPT for data analysis. We're going to create some beautiful graphs that will help us explore global happiness trends over time, compare happiness levels across countries, and even build a statistical model to investigate the age-old question, can money buy happiness? Our graphs may or may not look better than the actual report, and the best part is that you don't need to know any coding to create them. And even if we find out that money can buy happiness, it can certainly buy you a ChatGPT subscription, which can allow you to do data analysis in plain English, which ought to make you happy. So let's get started. But first, is ChatGPT a good data analyst? A recent study compared GPT-4 to human analysts across various tasks, from data extraction to visualization and analysis. ChatGPT showed impressive capabilities, often matching or surpassing junior analysts in performance. Table 4 of the paper shows that ChatGPT consistently scored higher than interns and juniors in metrics like data correctness and analysis complexity. However, senior analysts still held an edge in some areas, particularly in figure correctness and aesthetics. The study also revealed some limitations, such as occasional numerical errors and overconfident statements due to hallucinations. Perhaps the most striking finding is the cost effectiveness. According to Table 5, using GPT-4 for these tasks costs a mere fraction of hiring a human analyst, over 200 times cheaper compared to a senior data analyst. Alright, before we dive in the practical example, let's explore what ChatGPT can do. Most of you are probably thinking of ChatGPT as a conversational chatbot. However, ChatGPT is also a comprehensive data analysis tool that can handle various file formats including Excel spreadsheets, CVS files, PDFs, and even JSON data. How does ChatGPT work? ChatGPT uses Python libraries like Pandas for data manipulation and analysis and Matplotlibs for creating visualizations. The amazing part is that you don't need to know Python to use these tools. ChatGPT translates your natural language prompts into code, executes the code, and then presents the results in an easy-to-understand format. After using ChatGPT to analyze or visualize your data, you can click on the View Analysis link that appears at the end of the response to see how ChatGPT used these tools. You can upload up to 10 files to a given conversation, allowing for multi-file analysis. Additionally, up to 20 files can be attached to a GPT as knowledge, which ChatGPT can interact with if the code interpreter capability is enabled. It's important to note that while ChatGPT is doing the heavy lifting in terms of coding and computation, it can still make mistakes. Your role as a researcher or analyst remains critical. You'll be guiding the analysis, interpreting the results, and ensuring the, that the outputs make sense in the context of your research question. So let's look at an example. For this particular example, I'm going to use data from the World Happiness Report. Specifically, I'm going to download the data for table 2.1, which is also available in the description to this video below. So you can download it and follow along. Okay, once you download the data, all you have to do is upload the data to ChatGPT. You can do this by uploading the data from your computer, by finding the file, or you can simply drag and drop the data into the chat interface like I'm doing here. Another thing you can do is you can actually export the GPT store to see if there are any GPTs that were specifically designed for data analysis. So let's do this. Go and click on Export GPTs at the top left corner. And then if you scroll down, you're going to see the Data Analyst GPT, which was developed by OpenAI. So let's use this GPT for this particular example. Okay, so once you open the GPT, I'm going to drop the file that we just downloaded. When you do this, ChatGPT is going to show you the first few rows of observations in your data set. In this particular case, we have a panel data of countries around the world from 2008 to 2023. And we have numerous variables, country name, year, the life ladder question, which measures life satisfaction, GBT per capita, social support, and some other variables that measure different types of happiness, like positive and negative emotions. One thing that I want to briefly mention here is that ChatGPT's data analysis tool was designed to work best with structured data. You can think of structured data as having rows and columns and the data being organized neatly. For example, it's a good idea for the first row to contain your variable names. And you can also include a second row that uh, provides description of your variables to help ChatGPT understand the data a little bit better. Now that the dataset is uploaded, we are ready to start interacting with the data. 
The best part here is that we can simply use conversational language to, to start identifying trends, relationships between different variables and so on. So let's start by asking ChatGPT to tell us what happened to global happiness levels from 2008 to 2023 and create a graph to help us visualize this relationship. And that's very cool. Now we have a graph that shows us what happened to happiness levels over time. And one cool part about it is that there is actually no variable that measures global average happiness levels. And ChatGPT had to create an average of all countries to be able to create this graph. The process is actually iterative. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to ask ChatGPT to add several countries to this graph. United States, United Kingdom and Bulgaria, and also mark the area of the graph that corresponds to COVID-19. You can see that happiness levels were increasing and then when COVID hit in 2020, there was a dip in happiness. So let's see what happens. Very cool. And now we can actually compare happiness levels of different countries over time. You can see that in the case of Bulgaria, it was a relatively unhappy country back in 2010, but happiness levels have been steadily rising. Well, in the more developed countries, happiness levels have stayed relatively flat over time and dipped a little bit uh, since COVID. Okay, next, let's move on to cross-country analysis. This is particularly interesting in the World Happiness Report because it allows us to compare the well-being of different nations. We can start with a simple comparison. I'm going to ask ChatGPT to show me the top 10 happiest countries in 2023 and the bottom 10 least happy countries. Okay, this is a great start. However, I want all countries to appear in the same chart. I want to use better colors and I want the countries to be in descending order. So let me write a prompt and ask ChatGPT to recreate this graph to make it a little bit more visually appealing. Because the process can be somewhat random, if you're looking to produce consistent graphs, it may be helpful to pick a color scheme. Here are some color maps you can use that I've used in the past and I'll be using some of these color schemes in the examples that follow. All right, so here is what we get. The graph now looks far more appealing, much better colors. The countries are in descending order of happiness. However, it's a little bit cluttered, so we can ask ChatGPT to remove the legend with the countries on the left, on the right. And also notice that the legend, the color legend is wrong. Afghanistan and countries at the bottom have more bluish colors compared to the happiest countries which have reddish colors and the legend is flipped. So let's try to correct this. Okay, this looks much better, but ChatGPT got confused again. Now the red countries are the least happy countries and the blue countries are the most happy countries. So let's try to fix this one more time. Okay, so after a little bit of tweaking, we arrive at this beautiful graph that looks pretty good. Next, what I wanna do is I want to modify the, the graph to actually include countries in the middle of the happiness distribution. And I would ask ChatGPT, to actually add lines to indicate the bottom 10 least happy countries, the ones in the middle and the ones at the top. All right, after a little bit of tweaking, a few minutes of playing back and forth with ChatGPT, we were able to produce this beautiful graph that shows the distribution of happiness around the world. Okay, so let's compare our graph to the one from the World Happiness Report. It looks really nice, but what I notice is a little bit of inconsistency. In the figure from the report, Finland, Denmark, Iceland, and Sweden are the top four countries, while in ours, it's Finland, Iceland, Denmark, and Costa Rica. And I think the difference is because in the report, they're taking an average from 2021 to 2023, where we asked ChatGPT to do this for countries for only 2023. So let's fix this. All right, so here is the final product. Let's compare it back with the table from the World Happiness Report. We have Finland, Denmark, Iceland, and number 10 is Australia. Here we have Finland, Denmark, Iceland, and number 10 is Australia. So perfect. In just a few minutes, we were able to produce this beautiful graph that shows us how countries rank based on their happiness levels. So far, we have used ChatGPT for some basic visualizations and descriptive analysis. Next, we wanna tap into some of the more advanced data analysis features. So I'm going to start by asking ChatGPT to create a scatter plot that can show me the relationship between GDP per capita and happiness for 2013. I would also ask ChatGPT to feed an OLS or ordinary least squares line that shows 95% confidence intervals and display it on the graph. Here is a scatter plot that shows the relationship between GDP per capita and happiness. On the horizontal axis, we have log GDP per capita, and on the vertical axis, we have happiness, which is measured by life satisfaction. 
And you can see there is a very strong positive correlation between the two. Richer countries are much happier. Now, one thing that I notice is that there is a group of countries right here that seem to be outliers. And it would be interesting to find out what are these countries. So I'm just going to ask ChatGPT to label all axes with the country names. Very cool. And now we can actually have even better visualization, even though it's a little bit cluttered, we can still see what are these countries that are outliers? Why is it that they're not happier given their level of economic development? Okay, we can also repeat this analysis by asking ChatGPT to create plots for all the other variables in the data set. Here are the graphs that ChatGPT produced for all the other variables. For example, as social support goes up, happiness goes up as well. Similarly, as healthy life expectancy and freedom of life choices increase, people tend to be happier in those countries. And when perceptions of corruptions are higher, perhaps not very surprisingly, your happiness goes down. But here is an interesting one. As generosity goes up, there doesn't seem to be a very clear and straightforward relationship as the countries are kind of scattered all over the graph. Okay, so let's try to now run a regression analysis uh, where happiness is a function of all these variables in our data set. Um, income per capita, social support, healthy life expectancy, corruption, generosity, and freedom to make life choices. In a sense, we're going to try to replicate table 2.1, which tries to explain average happiness across countries using a pooled OLS model. Okay, so here is the final table that ChatGPT was able to produce to recreate table 2.1 from the report. The estimated coefficients show the strength and the direction of each relationship with happiness. And then the asterisks show the significance level. For example, we can see that log GDP per capita is positively and significantly correlated with the life ladder question. But what's really interesting here is that log GDP per capita does not seem to affect positive effect or negative effect. If we compare this table to the one in the report, there are almost identical. There are some very small differences that I was able to discover, and it had to do with the observations. The table from the report uses a few more observations, and after reading the technical appendix, it is because the authors actually ended up imputing some of the values. So one of the interesting results that emerged from this table is that while log GDP per capita tends to be strongly correlated with life satisfaction, it doesn't seem to have any effect on positive emotions and negative emotions. Looking at coefficients can be kind of tedious, so let's try to ask ChatGPT to actually create a predictive plot to show us what the model predicts the relationship between these variables are, so it could be more visually appealing and easier to understand. Okay, so as you can see, we have this really nice predictive plot that shows us, as we saw earlier, that log GDP per capita is strongly correlated with life satisfaction. But you can see that the relationship between GDP per capita and positive and negative effect is basically has no correlation whatsoever. Another thing we can do is we can ask ChatGPT to run a model in which we can test the interaction of variables like income, with, for example, social support. Okay, so let's do this. And here is a final result. You can see that this is a chart that shows us how GDP per capita is correlated with life satisfaction, but at different levels of social support. For example, we can see that the relationship is much stronger for countries where people have high levels of social support versus low levels of social support. You can also use ChatGPT to create heat maps, box plots, spider charts, and histograms that can help you explore data patterns, distributions, and relationships, making your analysis more insightful and visually engaging. Overall, what did we learn today? ChatGPT is an awesome tool for data analysis. It is easy and intuitive to use, and it doesn't require much technical knowledge. You can create beautiful graphs and visualizations with just a few prompts. What I love about the process is that I can spend less time coding and more time thinking about the questions that I want to explore, managing the project rather than dealing with the technicalities of making sure that my code runs smoothly. In fact, this is precisely the conclusion of this paper from Stanford, which argues that ChatGPT will change the nature of data analysis and data science education itself. 
we will become strategic managers of AI-generated content and spend increasingly less time writing code and handling data. In my own tests, ChatGPT had no problem merging data, creating des descriptive statistics, and running some basic and more advanced models. When I compared its outputs to Stata, it was able to perfectly replicate most graphs and basic models. Most of the tests I ran were basic linear regression models, but it was also able to perform random and fixed effects models and even some more advanced techniques such as latent profile analysis. I really love the ability to perform exploratory data analysis. I can just drop a file and ask ChatGPT to explore the data and give me insights. And don't forget that you can also ask ChatGPT to explain statistical concepts for you, give you ideas on how to improve your analysis, and working with it truly felt like a creative copilot. You simply cannot do this with traditional data analysis tools like Stata or R. However, ChatGPT is not perfect. It can make mistakes, often gets confused, and while it was surprisingly accurate in most of my tests, it does require vigilance and double-checking the output carefully, specifically if you're working on high-stake projects. I imagine that for the average person, I'm thinking mostly of my senior undergraduate students or even academic researchers in the social scientists, sciences, ChatGPT is a substantial leap forward in terms of capabilities and accuracy. After all, even if you're using Stata or R or Python, you're prone to making mistakes if you don't know what you're doing. Overall, it is an amazing tool that you should be using to help you do data analysis more efficiently. I hope you enjoyed this video and good luck with your next data project.